Okay, gang, don't be shocked. This is one of the things you're going to do today. Uh, we're going to, and if you notice, we've got uh, about 20 layers here. So, yeah, you're going to be doing this. And you're going to see me, first of all, do that here in this video. And then I want you to practice these steps as well. But uh, it's not as bad as this looks. And these are just images I grabbed very quickly uh, from the internet. You have access to those on our website. And you'll have the stuff, the links to everything on our DVD. But this isn't that bad of an image to work on. Trust me. Uh, you should have some fun playing with this. Okay? But we're not going to work on this right now. And we will in a little bit. Okay? So breathe easy right now. And here is the image we are going to work on right now. Uh, this is all about selections. And the project that I just showed you is about selections as well. A lot of it. And that's a big, uh, ginormous part of Photoshop is making selections. Especially really good selections. We have a variety of items in this photograph, but luckily for us, we have a white background, which makes the job of selecting things a lot easier. All right, we have a lot of selection tools at our disposal, starting with the marquee tool. Obviously, the marquee tool uh, makes rectangles. If we hold down the shift key, it makes perfect squares or rectangles. Obviously, this is not the ideal uh, selection method to select this knife, as you can see. Uh, it doesn't go with those rounded edges at all. The Probably the most used selection tool is the lasso tool right here. With the lasso tool, you can click and drag and select anything you want to. Obviously, that's not a great selection. It's a very quick selection, but I think it gives you the idea where the marching ants are. Right here we have the quick selection and the magic wand tool. I don't recommend a lot of usage of the magic wand tool, but the quick selection tool is an awesome uh, tool at our disposal. So how would I normally select the knife? Well, I'd use the quick selection tool. It started out in Photoshop Elements before it came to Photoshop and photographers were screaming why don't we have this in Photoshop? So Adobe did put it in here and watch what it does. If I just drag this over the handle, look what a nice job it did selecting that. Over here we still have the existing selection I made with the lasso tool. So let's just do a control D and control D turns off the marching ants or we can go to select. Let me bring those back. We can go to select and deselect and you see the shortcut key there all right so again with the quick selection tool i'll just go down the handle well you got black on white so that makes it much easier for photoshop to determine what you want selected right so we continue on and look what a nice job it did on the uh, knife blade but what if we move on to some of these other tools for instance the scissors we click and drag, and obviously if we, if we aren't careful, we can start selecting too much. So if we click here, it selects everything but that. If we click in here, you know, you see it, it's, uh, it needs to select things a little more uh, detailed than this. So I'm going to do a control D to turn that off and try it again. So I'm just going to click down here. And click over here, here, and it's omitting this area right here. So I'm going to hold down my control key and space bar and zoom in on that. And I'm going to make my tool smaller with the left bracket key and click on that and this and try to get it to select it. It's not wanting to. All right, so let's just take this rectangular marquee tool hold down the shift key and we can drag it and make that part of the selection too no 
we actually need to take away. So let's hold down the Alt key. And screwed that up, didn't I? Control Z, because I lost my marching ants here. I want to add to. Let me go back here. And see if I click that, it adds the whole thing. So I want to go in here to where this hole is and hold down the Alt key to deselect that area. Same thing here, and then same thing here. Now we got we lost part of our selection here, but that's okay. That that's, does a pretty good job because we don't have uh, detail right in here. It's it's just gone. So we can we can get around that, so to speak, with other tools like the lasso tool. If we go in here and say we want to add this to the selection, uh, we just hold down the shift key and we can add those things. We can say we want it clear up to here. All right, but we don't want that. So hold down the alt key and drag that in there like that. And that omits it. Of course, we got a little bitty area here and then we have to add some, right? So we hold down the shift key. So that's done a pretty, good job. Now to really tell how good of a job it did, you can do a control J. That puts it on its own layer. If we turn off all the other tools, that's how good it looks. Not bad at all, is it? So we've come a long way in Photoshop making selections. Let's because really before that we were doing a lot of selections with just the lasso tool and the marquee tool. So if you do it with the lasso tool, you can see how grungy that can be. And what we had to do then was zoom in, hold down the uh, Alt key to subtract, and then go down here. Sometimes it's better not to go, you know, and take too much in because then you get kind of careless. And now we got to add that back in a little bit. Now the nice thing on an edge like this, we can switch back to the marquee tool and say we want this much selected, but then you run into the angle is not right. So there's a way around that also. If we uh, want to make a uh, straight line like this, if we use the marquee tool, you see that's not lined up, but if we go to select and transform selection, it lets us line that up and then double click. And now we have the bounding box along that straight edge. Then to add to this, we can just click with the shift key down and add that in to take that out. We hold down the Alt key. Obviously on a Macintosh, it'd be Command to add, Option to subtract. All right, so let's zoom back out. What about the bowl? Well, we have uh, not only the rectangular marquee tool, but we have the elliptical marquee tool, which makes circles. So we drag that out, you see the circle that we have. To move that around, you can hold the space bar down and move it wherever it needs to be. Now I'm going to show you this gets a little, and I'm using CC 2019, so it, it's going to look a little bit different. You see that animation really, when I hold, hold that space bar down, the animation really looks odd. So that's kind of hard to, to get just right. Uh, it, it takes you a lot of time. But on something like this, it's a lot easier, space bar down, because it's pretty much a perfect circle. So is the coin. So there that is. And you can move that selection around with your arrow key. See, it turns on. Once you come into the selection, selected area, it turns into the move tool and allows you to move it around. But... Since we couldn't select that bowl very well, I would go back to the quick selection tool. Let's get rid of this down here. Control D. And you can just drag it through the bowl and voila. 
Now right here is a little shiny area that it didn't get. So notice it's a plus sign right now and it learns as you drag that around. Look at the selections around here. A little bit right there. We'll just kind of gradually bring that over until Photoshop this this belongs in there too. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's do a control J. We'll turn that off, make this smaller, and you see what a great job it did selecting the bowl. So those odd shapes, uh, as long as there's a lot of contrast, they do an amazing job. I'm going to trash can that, turn that back on. So we have the regular knife. It's the same thing with the uh, regular knife right here. You, you click and drag through there. Make sure your brush size is the right size too. Uh, left and right, right bracket keys will affect that. Now here, the reflection is so hard that we have really no detail. It's gone. So if you drag that through here and tell Photoshop that also belongs in the selection, you see it did a nice job. It just kind of snaps. So again, Control-0 to see the whole thing. Let's do a Control-J turn this layer off so we can see just the knife and it's it did a really nice job for us right so everything on here I'm gonna throw that away again everything on here can pretty much be done with the quick selection tool the rock a lot of contrast there in there control D the quarter control D the penny the fork, however, is another problem. If we just drag that through here, and let's drag through there, make sure all that's selected. Click on the tines here. Now there's no detail there, but it figured it out. Try it right there, figured it out. Now the tines are a little bit different. Let's get this down here. There we go, it learned. Let's make it smaller and climb on up. Trying to get those in there. See, it's it's uh, it's working at it. With every iteration, it seems like uh, these selection tools get better and better. There, it got a pretty pretty good job on that time there. We'll drag it through here. If yours isn't doing that, chances are good that you're not zoomed in far enough or your brush is set too big. So how do we get rid of this down here? Alt key down or option on a Mac and just paint that. Same thing here and it's learning. Just have to be patient with it as it learns. Now here we want to add to it. So we're just kind of painting the selection in. Get that on the edges. Again, you keep clipping, clicking and it learns that you're wanting more or less. Right here, could use a little bit more. Right over here, a little, little bit's gone because there was no detail. Let's do a control J. Let's turn this off. Let's go up here and look at the times. Pretty doggone good. This this would have been something that uh, back in the day would have taken possibly an hour to select well. Let me show you uh, one other way of doing this. I'm going to hit backspace and get rid of that. We also have underneath the lasso tool the polygonal or polygonal, however you might want to call it, uh, it will get angles for you. If we click once here, click once there, and bring it down, keep clicking, it will do a pretty good job. Now where it's rounded, you have to put more clicks in because it's used to making straight lines. Let's just bring it back up here a little bit. I'm clicking as I go telling it to include this. 
is again this tool is used uh, to make straight selections so we're kind of cheating by putting more points in and we're just going to take it back over here and notice it snaps to that little icon telling you it's finished with that it's back to the beginning so let's do a control J and turn this off again and you can see it uh, is based on feathering this particular selection really softened all those edges way up so it made it almost useless so that's something if you run into it you'll know what's happening I'm gonna do away with that and show you one more time put this feather on zero and now when we click and click we'll go down here a little faster this time because you saw what I had to do to round the corners off we'll just click 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 and we'll go over here I'm not gonna put down so many points and back to where we started control J turn this off and you see now we got nice visible straight lines here if we wanted to take away from this uh, we certainly could have gone into each one of those tines with this as well more painstaking obviously you can see than the quick selection tool then you have the magnetic selection tool which means it's going to as I click and drag this it looks at the edges uh, for contrast I don't have Got to move this over. Okay, let's try this again on the magnetic lasso. So let's, let's just go along here. And if it goes crazy on you, let me show you here in a second. Go like this and then in. Well, that's not exactly what we want to do. And you move your mouse around and it gets even more complicated and crazy. Just go up to your backspace and start clicking it till you get back where you want to go. Now we can go ahead and go forward. And it just keeps on laying them down until you get back to the beginning. Click. Let's do a control J to see what our selection looks like. Awesome. Very clean. So that's another way to make selections if you've got a lot of contrast, which this does with our elements on there with a black or with a white background sorry so let's get rid of this one hit uh, backspace on that layer uh, obviously we, we can't use the um, magnetic lasso on things like this but we can certainly use them on the knife but again once we start clicking and there's no detail sometimes that can be a little weird let's just go on across forcing it let's just go okay we went out of the line there so we just hit backspace and now we can hit backspace again and take off and reattach right here and there we go so this is a, a pretty good roundup of the selection tools you've got uh, the rectangular marquee and the elliptical for you know squares and circles you have the lasso tool, which will lasso about anything, but it's very hard to control. Under it, if we click and hold, we have the polygonal lasso and the magnetic lasso. And then if you click on the quick selection tool, uh, you have kind of the best of both worlds. Now, some, something like this, it can be a little more problematic, but it will do the job. You sometimes you just have to really enlarge it. You got to make sure that that white is not part of the selection. So you hold down Alt or Option and just drag it through there, telling Photoshop, mm -mm, "I don't want this." Let's get this down here at the tip. That right there. Let's do a Control J. See what we actually have here. There we go. So what we got there also, I got that part of the knife blade I didn't throw away too. Uh, so let's just hit delete or backspace on that layer. And you can see all the tools right here that you need to make really good 
selections. You also have the pen tool down here. This is very intricate. I'm not a big fan of the pen tool. You basically have to click and drag to make turns. You can draw straight lines like so, just clicking. But if you want to make a curve, you have to click and drag, click and drag. So I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it makes awesome selections, but it is also time consuming and uh, it takes a lot of practice to get used to it. All right, that wraps up the selection part of our tutorial for today. Okay, we're going to take a look at this image and I'm going to go over the masking thing again and hopefully this will make it a little more clear. All right, we've got this image of the stuffed animals and we also need the image of the, the uh, little girls. Now we only need this gal on the, the right, this little girl. So we're just going to use the uh, lasso tool, which is, as I mentioned before, a, a nice quick and easy way to put marching ants around or whatever we want. And we only need her head, so I'm just going to make a loose selection like so. Notice there's only a 2% feathering, which in this case really doesn't make any difference if it's zero or, or, or a little bit more. Uh, we just don't worry about the soft edges here because we're going to use this in another image. So what I'm going to do now is just simply copy this part. So remember the shortcut keys. Control C because it's already selected. Otherwise we would do a Control A if we wanted to select everything, but we've selected her head, so now we just do a Control C to copy it to the virtual clipboard. Now we go over to the image with the stuffed animals and do a Control V as in victory. Now she looks tiny. Um, that's okay, because what we're going to do is turn this in to a smart layer. It's got the little girl on it, right? So we're going to right click and say convert this to smart object. Now I get kind of excited with this because there's two ways that, that we can use this. And the first one uh, is a little bit different perhaps. Now notice when I opened this image of the, the stuffed animals, it came in with a background and locked, right? So I want to move, uh, first I'm going to move this layer of the little girl underneath. So I can't do that as long as that's a background layer and it's locked. It just will not allow me to push either one of these around or push that around. This one can't go underneath it. So if I double click on it, it simply says, you want to just name this layer zero. Yeah, okay. So now I can move that layer on top or I can uh, push this layer underneath. So the background has just been made into a regular layer which for this particular exercise is wonderful. So here's what we're going to do. The little girl is right here. And again, just so you can see the size of it. But remember, it's a smart layer. So if I do a control T on this, it's, it's really not going to do anything because, um, because I have the marching ants around it. See them marching away there? So if I do a control T, nothing. I turn the, the marching ants off, control D, and now do a control T. Now we can make her bigger. And remember, no matter how much how big I make it, her quality is going to be just fine because it's a smart layer, smart object on that layer. All right, so now we got this layer on top of it. We can't see the little girl, right? I want to put her face right here on this stuffed monkey. All right, so what I need to do to see her underneath is what? Punch a hole right here so the little girl can, can be seen through it. So to do that, to punch a hole, I can erase. Obviously, I can just bring the eraser over here and erase, and, and we can see through it. But that damages that layer. We can't undo an erase uh, to the point of making it work for us. So let's let's go back here to where we were. I need to put a mask on here. Remember the square donut. Now I can paint 
with the paintbrush. Put the letter, press the letter P if you want to. <clears throat> and I'm just very quickly going to punch a hole right, right here. So with black, I'm hiding. I'm hiding the material that's on that layer, right? So little girl's not in position. So I need to go back down to where the little girl is. And let's just double click that and say girl. And let's uh, turn on the move tool because this girl is the thing that's selected because it's highlighted in gray. And now I can just bring her down like so. Now, obviously, uh, her face needs to be a little bit bigger still yet. Not a problem. Control T. We'll just grab these handlebars. Remember, on CC 2018, uh, you need to um, hold shift down or perspective is lost and you'll really end up with a mess. So then we can fine tune this mask. We can paint uh, more with black if we want to with the paintbrush on and reveals more. Control Z that real quick. Or we can turn it on to paint which will now restore the original. Now we're doing it really quickly. Uh, because the opacity is all the way up there to 100%. Let's, let's knock that down to around 25. And we'll kind of cover this up. Make my brush smaller with the uh, left black bracket key. And we just can kind of paint the monkey's face back in. Cover hers up. Okay, we zoom out. And let's just say we want to bring more of the face in here. So we switch to black, which is going to punch more of the hole back out. And let that pretty little girl's face show some more. Let's just make her a little bit bigger. Remember, if we didn't make that a smart layer, to do this would really be uh, kind of torturing the image. Let's move that around a little bit. Now I think we're cooking. Double click that or hit enter. Let's zoom out a little bit. So now you see the stuffed monkey has the little girl's face. Well, what if we want to do that again? Maybe put her face on this lion, stuffed lion. So let's make a copy of the girl. So control J. Well now she's on her own layer. Move tool. We can move one copy and put it up here if we want to. Now notice she's so big it's overlapping into the other image a little bit. That's okay. We're going to go up here and punch another hole in this image right on the lion's face. So we turn the paintbrush on. We paint with black to hide. We're hiding the lion's face. And then we can see we, we need to turn on the move tool. Get on the right layer though, and let's put on the move tool with control V. And we need to hide some of that stuff, don't we? Okay, we need to make her smaller because her, her face is way bigger than the area here because the animal's further back in the image. So let's do a control T and we'll just kind of bring these corners in until we're happy with the way we've got it. Let's try this. So not looking bad right there. Let's go ahead and click back on the mask, turn on the paintbrush, and we can make her a little more clear here. Just bring more of her in. I'm, it's coming in a little bit at a time because the opacity is down to 27%. So let's make it smaller. Pay attention to these edges so it looks Okay, and we can bring hide some more of that if we want. Press uh, white and bring this back a little bit. Uh, so we can hide more of that if we want. I mean, we can go back and forth until we're happy with the way we've made this look. So bringing more of the little girl and her hair back in. We don't want to race down in here though. I got a little carried away there. I don't know why. Uh, so we'll bring some more of her hair and everything up in here. 
There's her chin coming in. And we got to make a determination just how much we want to bring in. We just see how it looks. It's not like we're messing things up where we can't get them back. I think that looks kind of cool. Let's hide some of this stuff here. Let's back up and see what we got. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right? So we can do it again. Put it on the lamp if we want to. I don't want to overdo this. But let's look at this another way. Okay, I'm back where I was. I've got the stuffed animals here on top. Nothing's changed there. Double click this background if we want to. Because we need to be able to work with it, right? So... Now I need the little girl, so I'm going to do a control C, come back over here, do a control V, and I'm going to make her a smart uh, layer again, smart object on that layer. And this time I'm going to leave it on top and work the opposite way, right? So let's make her bigger, control T, and we'll put her on, uh, did it again here, let me try it again without messing the perspective up eh, let's see I made her way big then doesn't matter we won't hurt her double click All right instead of putting the mask on the animals stuffed animals we're gonna put the mask on the, the little girl this is just to show you you can work either way alright so the square donut on the little girl turn on the paintbrush and now we're going to hide some of the little girl. So we're hiding with black. So we we'll just paint here and start hiding her. I'm just going to do this kind of fast. I'll turn the opacity all the way up. And then we'll, we'll fix it. Okay, so we're trying to get her inside the stuffed monkeys area here so let's turn on the move tool click on her not the mask we don't want to move the mask so much okay we're we're not in bad shape there are we looks kind of cool right there so let's zoom in I'm holding down the control in the space bar and clicking and now with the mask selected paintbrush again we're kind of bringing some of the monkey's face back in, right? So that's basically hiding the little girl. So now we'll bring her back very quickly. And then we can fine tune it. Press the X to hide some of the extra here. We'll turn down the opacity so we can gently uh, work with this. And bring some of that back in and hide some of the hair down here maybe and up here that's the beauty of this you know until we're happy we, we can just keep doing this but not just even until we're happy now if we want to change this a year from now if we save this as a PSD file this will still be there so we can come in here and, and change it if we decide we want more of that woven in material up here at the top bring some of that down here let's back out so you can see it and again pretty cool so let's do this let's make a copy of this layer control J so now we can move this little girl copy over here to the lion notice we got some junk up there so all we have to do is paint with black to hide that. And away it goes. Let's bring it back up 100% so we can get rid of that. And her face, obviously, it's going back into the image. So the animals back here are getting smaller. So we need to click on her, select that, control T, and just bring these corners in. Now let's go with that. Now we'll zoom in, work on the mask. So let's just uh, 
paint here. We're up at 100% again, so we're bringing it back very harshly. So let's tone that down and bring some of that in a little slowly. So we zoom out. Not bad. And we can do that to all the creatures. Now the thing is, you ran into problems with the head tilted the wrong way or whatever. But we can. Let's do one more. Let's do a control J here. And we'll take this one of her and we'll move it over to the donkey, for example. And we can do a control T and go outside the box and it allows us to turn it. Okay, so we can use my up arrow to fine tune it, so to speak. Let's make it a little bit bigger. The arrow keys again. Let's turn it a little bit more. There we go. So that's a very fast job. But notice it's got a mask too because we did a control J. So it's masking a lot of her hair and so forth. If I want to right click and say disable that, then we see the whole thing. So again, we're not uh, throwing data away. We're just hiding it and showing it. Let's tip that a little bit further here. There we go. So hopefully this helps you with the mass a little bit more, reinforces that, kind of breaks it down maybe a little bit more. We can put her underneath and put the mask materials just one, one time on this layer and punch the holes that we need. Or like we did here, create several of her, put a mask on each one, and go that direction. It's whichever way you're more comfortable. They both work. And well, all right, let's move on to the image with the old tree on it. We're going to create a, a fantasy image uh, with, you know, just using other images to, to bring them in and, and give them kind of a unique digital look, which a lot of people are doing. So starting with this image right now, it just, you know, looks kind of bland. It's very fat, uh, flat looking. The lighting's not ideal. Let's just go up uh, there real quickly. We could do this um, brightness contrast adjustment layer. And again, if your adjustments aren't open, go to window down to adjustments and we can, you know, bump this uh, real quickly, making it darker because we want this fantasy world look going on. OK, now remember, it is. Um, on its own layer with its own mask we can come back in 10 years and change this or tomorrow and change it if we want to we can go right back in there right now and and fine-tune it so I'm gonna leave it about right there for now now I want the teddy bear so I'm gonna go ahead and close these other layers real quick because they're just taking up room uh, on the hard drive and let's just go over here and find my teddy bear. All right, so here selections come in again. It's up to you how you would select the teddy bear, but obviously if you have the newer version, if you click on the quick selection tool, you've got a select subject right there that does the work for you. Um, so there it is already. I mean, most of it's fixed that quickly. If you have an older version that doesn't have the, the select subject, I would just use the quick selection tool, make my brush a bit bigger like this, and run it over it. Because it's on a white background, it's going to select pretty good anyway. All right. So we get down here and we run into this alarm clock thing. We have to fix that. So we get to use some more of the tools that we've learned about. We need to fine tune this a little bit. So let's just click there real quick. Uh, here's where the lasso tool really comes in handy. Uh, obviously, we need the shape of this other paw. So I'm going to add to the selection area. And to do that with the lasso on, I hold the shift key down. And you see the plus sign, right? So now I can just start here, just do a click and run it down here. Just like that. So it includes this other area. I'm going to go 
down here a little bit and that should be about right now notice this is a little too much so I'm holding down the alt or option key on the Mac and this takes away from the selection now the reason I do it the way I do uh, if I go in like that and hold it down you see that it takes away if I make a, a hook up there like this and then let go it snaps right to the other end so I don't have to draw it every time I can just let go and let it snap so right in here I'm going to take away a little bit and just let it snap I want to round that a little bit right here so I'll make a little curve let it go it helps to round it out make it look a little bit nicer alright so if if you don't have the selected mask that's built into the newer versions of Photoshop, if you go over to um, select, hold down the shift key and click on select and mask, and you've got this older version of the refine edge, which is uh, cool too. It works very, very nicely. Uh, so either way of selecting and masking is is fine oh dandy with me I'm going to just click on the select and mask right here now you gotta remember the teddy bear is very low resolution so it's not gonna be gorgeous okay so we're just gonna click on select and mask and take a look that's it knocked out with his ear gone okay so that didn't work out so great did it so I'm gonna cancel that real quick and yep sure enough it's not selected what about if we do this on the layer that it's going to be in anyway? Well, that's what I really like to do so I can see that it's blending okay. First of all, let's get this other ear in. So I'm going to switch to the quick selection tool and just click right there and look how nice and easy that was. So um, let's just bring this over with a layer mask on it and notice when I clicked layer mask it put this on there for me right let me undo that real quick I've got marching ants on there so if I click the layer mask there is the mask already there because I had the marching ants going so we have the layer mask here and notice the marching ants on, are on right now that's good because now the we can adjust that mask if we have to. All right, so I'm going to take this whole thing over to the tree and let go. Now the mask looks pretty pretty good, uh, but we can bring back whatever we want to because we still have that layer mask right here. So let's, I went too big. Uh, I'm going to turn on the move tool, letter V, V is in victory, brings that up. And move it over into the corner and I'm gonna make him big control T now if we do that I may have to resize this bear two or three times or more to get it the way I want and later on I may decide it's the wrong size again and have to do it again so let's escape that go up here right click and say convert to smart object because I don't want to hurt my teddy bear now it gets rid of my mask that's okay I can still uh, hold down the control key click on that and the marching ants come right back and that a beautiful thing all right so let's control team now and, and we can make him as big as we want to and kind of maybe set him back in there like like this okay and we can lean him whatever we want to do with him again I, I don't know yet that that's just you know where I want to have him but that's okay we'll decide that later obviously he's too bright for the image right now but that's okay too we'll fix that now I want to do something about this so I need to um, get rid of the alarm clock basically and fill it with good stuff and we got fringing here that I never like so to get rid of that, let's hold down the um, control key and click on the bear selection right there. 
turn on the marching ants. What we need to do is contract those marching ants to come in so we can chop off some of that uh, white data that we don't want. So we go to select, down to modify, and contract. Now we'll probably have to come down, uh, come inside a, a good ways. So let's try four just to see uh, what happens. Now notice it bit way in. That's too far. So let's undo that. Control Z. Go back and try it again. Select, modify, contract. Let's try two. Click OK. Now you see it's got pretty much all of the white. So let's let's do this. If we hit delete right now, can't do it, right? So what we need to do is put that on its own layer just as it is right now. So control J. It's not a smart layer right now, but if I have to go back and do that again, you know, resize it, it's easy to do. Now we still got some fringe, so let's hold down the control key again and let's do this. Go to select inverse because if I hit, let me turn this one off. If I hit delete right now or backspace, it kills everything or erases everything that's on the inside of the marching ants. That doesn't help, does it? So control Z to bring that back. We want to select, modify, contract by the two. We see it go in. Now we go to select inverse because we want everything outside of the marching ants to go away. So now when I hit backspace, we get rid of that white that was around the edge. And it looks pretty good. Okay? And if I want to bring him back out of that corner, notice it's chopped him off. So when you do that, it's better to have the object all the way in the image. So what I can do is throw that one away because we've got our unhurt bear right there. I can bring him out and he's okay. See? So I'm holding down the control key again, click on the bear, and let's do a control J. And we'll turn that one back off again. And this time let's make sure the bear is all inside the image. Now we're going to load that the marching ants up again. Control, click right on the bear. Go up to select, modify, contract by two. Select, inverse, and then hit backspace or delete to get rid of those extra pixels. Great, right? We're, we're going now. So now we can move the bear out of the way a little bit. Now if we want to turn him back into a smart layer, now that we've gotten rid of that junk, we can right click and say convert to smart object. We can throw this other one away if we want to, but we don't have to. All right, I'm not going to muddy the waters up any further. There's some other things that we can do right now, but let's just say we're happy as clams, except we need to fix that foot. Let's fix it before we turn that into a smart object. So I did a Control-Z a couple of times to get back here, and because we can't paint or anything on top of a smart layer. So let's just um, see what we can do. I'm going to load up the marching ants again and say I want to go in here and spot healing. I'm going to sample from eh, over here in this other paw and just paint. Now notice it's kind of smearing stuff. That's because it's dealing with a, a lot of edges. It's, it's looking at that stuff below it and it's getting kind of and we do it up here it's the same kind of stuff so there's sometimes you have no choice but to use the regular clone stamp tool so what we'll do what we'll do here is hit escape real quick i, I don't know why it's selecting the whole thing like that let me um, 
resize this thing so it makes a little more sense left bracket key to get it down there now I'm gonna alt click right up in here and and just go through here now you see the difference in tonality in that it's just not the same colors so to speak Control Z to undo part of that let's get that right in here that looks pretty good. You just have to eyeball it and say, yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's control D to turn off those marching ants. If we want to put some more of this Paul right down in here, let's just do that while we're here. Let's click right here and let's see the tonality there is big time different. We're going to leave that alone for now. We don't want to spend a lot of time uh, working on things that won't be that noticeable anyway when we get done. All right, we need to go get our mushroom. So file open. And where is my mushroom? There it is. Click open. So in this case, uh, we want to just have the mushroom and maybe some of this clutter down here kind of will look good in our other forest image, I think. So we can, let's try the smart uh, quick selection here and just see what we get. That's looking pretty good. Let's select some of this down here. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of that. Uh, let's see, look at that top edge on the mushroom. We don't want to leave any of that. All right, let's let's say we're done. Now we could get a lot more extra and bring it over if we wanted to. Um, and let's just be sure, let's do that. So I'm going to add to this selection. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Notice it turned into a plus, And I'm just going to bring all this stuff over with me. And let's just extend this out a little bit too. All right, Control C to copy that, right? And come over here, Control V. Now, this is really big, so no big deal. We'll fix that when we need to. Now, the bear doesn't match up because he's very light and the dark, the skin is very, or the scene is very dark. We're going to do all that adjusting here in a few minutes. Right now, we want to mask this. We don't want to erase it. We want to put a mask on there and hide the stuff along the edges, right? We want this to look nice. So we come up here. We get the right brush size. Right in there should be good. Let's make sure that the brush is fairly hard around this top edge. And we'll do this at 100% right now. So here we go. So we got to get all of those little aerial areas. We don't want any white glow coming in. Now if we mess it up a little bit like I did there, we just press X to go back to using black and we just paint that back in. Use X again just to get the top edge. It's all right if we cut into that just a little bit. And having it on the layer that we're going to use it in helps us to be able to make sure we see if we're blending it in properly. Now if we want to, we can turn off all this other stuff so we can see our edges better. Whoop, control Z that. And we just go right on around. Now we don't necessarily want to whack all of this stuff off of there. Um, and I'm painting with yellow on here. What's that about? See anything wrong? Well, if you look over in the layers palette, the highlight is around the image. So I'm painting with yellow. I need to be on this, the mask. So Control Z a couple of times here, Control Alt Z, get back over on the mask. Because we're destroying our image if we're not on that mask. 
So let's zoom out, control minus. Let's turn on our background so we can see. So now we got a nice top. Let's blend this with the rest of the scene. So I'm going to move this down, control, or just press the letter V to, to move it wherever you want. And yeah, we're probably going to have to make this a little bit smaller. Um, no problem. But let's turn on the paintbrush. Now we want to take the opacity way down. And we want the brush to be soft. So let's go back over here and run the hardness all the way to zero. Make our brush bigger. And now we start blending with the background. I like a lot of that golden look that's in there and some of that we can keep in the foreground and just have that look kind of cool as part of our overall image. We'll make that smaller to get in here. I'm, I'm liking that golden glow that's in there. So we'll get rid of some of that in there, but we're going to use some of this too. Let's, let's take this thing down. Let's keep painting because we're only at 23%, so it's, it leaves kind of slowly, and that's, that's okay in this case. We can blend some of this back there in. Now let's make this bigger. We don't want this hard, darker area in here so much. So we can just paint to our heart's content if we want to bring it back. Remember, we just switched to white and we paint again and, and we start bringing those other elements back. Gives us a lot of freedom. If you want to go in there and whack some of this out, we just need to make the brush smaller. Get some of these straight lines out of there. I like that little twiggy thing coming up there. That's kind of neat. If you get too close uh, with a soft brush, you'll just make it go away. So probably a good time to make this a little harder edged before we make that go completely away. Now you gotta kind of make it bigger so you can get in all of those areas, make your brush smaller. It won't kill you. Because the main thing is what you end up with afterwards is going to be really, really cool. Okay. So we've got that blended pretty good. Maybe we could knock this side down a little bit more like we did the other side. So let's make it bigger. And the opacity appears pretty good. So let's just kind of take that stuff down some more. There we go. All right. So now then let's make the, let's turn the, that light on. Now see how it looks. So we really have to do this sometimes with our all our layers on so we can make sure we're really getting those edges softened. We don't want that telltale stuff hanging around, do we? And we might want to make it a little bit darker too. Let's uh, not get to be on the right layer. Mushroom. Let's put a little Dealy on the mushroom. See if now notice it's making the whole image darker. Right here will tell Photoshop you only want to affect the, the layer directly below. So we click that. Now it's only affecting the mushroom. Let's take this down a little bit. So it's a little more interesting. 
but we need to do some more work on masking this stuff. And sometimes it's easier to go in and cover all of this and then bring back the things that you want later. So if we get in here and get kind of aggressive of getting rid of this glow, and we certainly don't want that white hanging around over here. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this because we we got some other stuff to need we need to add in there. But this should give you the idea how to hide it. And then when you want to bring it back, make your brush small, turn your opacity up some more. Now we want to reveal that so we can go here, shift click here. All right, let's see how it looks now. All right, so we can spend more time over here softening this stuff up. up. And we got to take that opacity down, make sure the brush is really soft. And, oops, paint with black to hide some of this stuff. So there, something like that, right? Now, turn on the bear. Let's move the bear a little bit now that we have the mushroom in here. Control Z to get that back. Got to click on the bear's layer. Take him down there because I want some of that to play off that bear a little bit too. All right, so let's put a um, brightness contrast on the bear. So tell it just the layer below. And you can just crank that bear down like that. All right. But we want some light to be coming from this mushroom, kind of a magic mushroom effect. Okay. So we're going to punch a hole in some of that darkness right here that's on the bear. Okay. So we'll click and we'll turn on the brush. And we'll, whoops, that's a little, little harsh. So let's make this bigger, make sure it's all the way soft. So you just bring back however much of that light you want to bring back. I think that's enough for now. Now we need the little girl. So we go over here and do another open. And where is the little girl watering the flowers? So we can grab her right here, I think would be fine. But let's, let's just do a control A, control C, come back over here and do a control V so we can see her against this entire environment. Let's move her up to the top. See, we got a lot of layers going already, so if you're following along, uh, you're building those layers. So we want the little girl pouring the water on the mushroom instead of the flowers. So we're gonna extract her. Now, the little girl's on her own layer with the water can and the flowers, right? We can still go over to the Quick Selection tool and click on Select Subject because the only thing that that's going to be seeing right now is this layer. It's not going to see the bear and all that stuff below it. So there she is selected. Let's, let's zoom in. So we want this selected too. So let's make that smaller and we'll say we want that. We don't want this. So we hold down the Alt or Option key. Wow, it really got aggressive there. And the reason is this is not a highly high resolution, I should say, image either. Um, can you know hold down your alt key and let's try to get this stuff 
around the edges here make sure there's a good job on the the feet here we can take this on down with the shift key down alt key to take away we're going to get a little bit of this leaf down here that's okay let's get that shoe we want our shoe and foot okay now let's see her against let's get this in there oh Okay, not bad. We're going to have to do something about the highlight in her hair because of the woodsy scene. All right, let's go into Select and Mask. So now we see her against the image that we've created. And really, it's looking pretty good. We've got some stuff that we can fix a little bit better, but it's not looking too bad. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now she's got her own layer mask, so control minus. Let's bring her down, move tool. And obviously we need to make her bigger or we need to make the mushroom smaller. And I, I think we need to make it, it's pretty huge. So control T and we'll just maybe put it about like that. Double click or hit enter, then we need to select the girl layer. And we'll just bring her down maybe even a little bit further using the arrow keys. Alright, looking pretty cool. Now we need water sprinkles. Now this is this is interesting. We're gonna go and get the old guy here with the water. Now let's just go ahead and, and bring all of this in. Control A, Control C, and bring it over here, Control V. Huge, right? That's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's do a uh, Control T. Now you see the bounding box is way out of view. So if I do a Control Zero, there's everything. So I'm going to drag, and remember to hold the shift key down. I'm going to drag this, and I'm going to also turn it. Move my mouse outside the box and turn it, because that's going to be our water shower coming down underneath the mushroom. So let's double click it. And now we need to mask uh, all this other stuff out. So we put a mask on the garden hose, brush. Black is correct. Let's turn that baby up to 100%. We don't want the hand. We don't want the hose. We just erase that stuff. And then we want to back this down and make sure that this is big and kind of Move that around a little bit so we can see. Brush back on. I'm trying to make that hand go away. Now to make this water uh, look a little cooler, we're going to change what's called the blend modes. Right now the blend mode is right here and it says it's normal. If we click that and go to dissolve, see what happens to it? It kind of distorts a lot. What can we do to maybe make that a little bit more sparkly, so to speak? Let's drop the opacity of this. And then let's try that again. There we go. So we all get all kinds of water spraying all over the place. Let's zoom in. And again, with the old masking right over here, we want to make, get rid of some of this quickly. We don't want it going over here. And we can kind of take that opacity down a little bit more if we want to. Let's see what we can do by lowering the opacity some. Get a big brush going here. And let's 
turn on the move tool see if we can't bring that up a little bit there we go so you can control how much uh, this is spraying over and and how many sprinklies are coming off there but the blend modes are fun to experiment with you see different looks as you go through there the dissolve is really the only one in this case that gives us that misty fine water looking stuff okay so let's go back to the girl and let's um, make that darker and we turn on the brightness contrast let's just take it down dark but remember we want to click this so it doesn't affect all layers just the one with the girl on it okay that looks pretty good right there if we need to you know let a little um, light into our face we can click right on that and then turn on the brush and that's too much because we're too high and you can just open her face up a little bit with that now we've got all of this space over here on the other side uh, we can crop that or what I like to do sometimes is just come in like this and say that's about where I want it and we can go to image crop right there so now we can fine-tune anything we want to if the background is still too bright we double click here and we can take that down further if the bear needs to be fine-tuned we can take the bear down further as well the girl same way so hopefully uh, you see how many layers we have here involved we've done some really sophisticated stuff but if you slow down you take your time and watch this video you will be able to control it just fine you'll be very surprised I think uh, as to how cool you can make these work I mean you you can take and refine this in so many ways and that's you know a big part of the fun of, of doing it um, let me go up here real quick I'm gonna take that down maybe even a little bit more it's just fun to be able to think of ideas and and what might be fun to do now notice down here with the bear we've got all this blank space if we want to we can click on the background layer and then click on new layer and we can that's right above the the background we can turn on the clone stamp tool make this bigger make sure it's a hundred percent make sure you're right there you check and make sure that this current layer and below or all layers then you want to sample from the background layer it's not looking at the mushroom it's looking down here the layer and below it so if I click over here and paint see what we did now let's just say we want some of this green over here up in there well it's all going to appear already darkened and everything because it's behind this brightness contrast layer all right so lots of things that, that you can do to play with this image and make it your own creation have some fun experiment with this and you're going to be surprised what you can learn from just this one image talk to you all later bye bye